So, hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. The long-awaited Yusuf and Johnny guest appearance. Because you've been on without me, haven't you? Can't believe you did that. Yeah. It was while you were away, mm-hmm. and then I missed your birthday. I remember. But I've got you some coffee now, so... Well, no, I have to wait to see if I'm allowed the coffee. Because <laughs> you support two bags, one that needs grinding and one that doesn't need grinding. For two people. And you know one may I have not a have a grinder. One definitely has a grinder. And one so is on grinder. One is on grinder. So <laughs> not, not even by his choice. Yeah. I have I wonder, been on I wonder grinder. if you're still on grinder. I was on grinder twice. Catfish. You've, you've both catfished. Been catfished? Been catfished on grinder, yeah. Or been the, been the subject. Been yeah. the catfish on yeah. grinder. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Later on, when we do our first ever Q&A, make sure that you tune in for that. Um, When we do our first ever Q&A, did you see that there's one question which wasn't a question? It just said, I wish he was, I wish he lived close enough to me so that I could find him on Tinder in my radius. Mm. You need to expand your radius ultimately. Like, you know what you need? Tinder Pro. Or you can just travel around. Drop yourself. Can you? Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of Tinder, we are going to talk about dating advice today. Dating. Dating. Um, dating. It's something that I've been... <sighs> Relationships has been a podcast that we wanted to do for ages. And dating long advice... Time. Yeah, real long time. Dating advice for me forms a nice foundation <laughs> for that because most people will go through the process of dating someone that kind of, you can take it from the moment that you meet someone that you may fancy up until the point at which you, they become your boyfriend or girlfriend. Mm. And there's an awful lot, like that's a, an area that covers many sins, right? Mm-hmm. Like from first dates to seeing someone, whatever the fuck that means to so when from, you define the relationship and from initial to being exclusive with someone. Yeah. What I'm well, talking about from initial to marriage. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so yeah, because I would, I would say, arguably, all of that is technically, in my mind, I know that's ridiculous. No, no, it's still, still kind of dating. sort of like because I think it's all of it's just arbitrary. Well, what is a relationship? A relationship is legal. legal yeah, you've not litigated yourself into a relationship <clears throat> yeah. until you're married, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, so all of this we can try and mm. conceptualize down. So I wanted to. Should we move chronologically then from single life all the way up to? Mm, I want to leave single life. Unlock this and make up a fresh note. I mean, it makes some notes. Sure. I just want to organise my thoughts. Sorry, I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it to you, Lemon. Lemon. I make, I make notes now. This isn't a Russell Brand thing, but I do actually make notes. So I wanted to posit to you a bunch of things that I've been thinking recently about. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? <laughs> just that he's got a, what Swift key. Well, just oh. leave him to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, no, no. It, it's. That he's got a special keyboard on we'll his phone. But just leave him to talk about it, and then we can life hack it, can't we? Oh, oh yeah, so, okay, so I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. In, oh, yeah. in two weeks' time. Listeners and <laughs> and viewers on the brand new three-camera home YouTube setup. 3D. One, two, Trez. Um, the reason that I may seem a little agitated is that Johnny was 50 minutes late, and Yusuf was 90 minutes late. And we've planned this for two weeks. You've been kind, though. I was more than 90 minutes late. Okay. Despite having six, seven days notice yeah. for this. It's fine. So. It's gone. Moving on. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about. It's gone. I wanted to talk it's about. Gone. Sorry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be sensible. You're please. testing me. It's all right. Well, it'll, it'll, you've got you to warm in. Warm up, More? Warm up to it. Right. He's so, just got here. He's freezing cold. Go on. Go. Go. So I wanted to talk about dating. And what I've been thinking about, while I was away in America, I ended up um, having a chat with a young girl over there who'd kind of been going through the throes of her first serious relationship. And what came out of that was <clears throat> me making some realisations and some rules about my past behaviour that girls could stick to, which would form a framework for them to avoid bad guys and stick with good guys. So some heuristics that they can follow yeah. to keep them on the... On the right path. Are okay. you a bad guy or a good guy in that I was. Framework? I was the person that you should avoid. Right. And the reason that I know the things that you need to look out for <coughs> and the, the barriers you need to put in place is because they were the ones that would have tripped me up. Okay. So, so this is the cheat. This is, this is behind the curtain. Like, this, this is, is the what? cheat. This is the cheat codes of how to get around assholes. Reverse wow. engineered it. 
Okay, I, I would also like to contest that further down the line over that you are someone who you want to avoid because but I you think... only know me you only know me from what when I was 24 25 true and oh, okay. before so that I'm talking, I'm talking I'm talking like 18 to 23 so anyway okay. I've got some so Sorry. let me let me foundation it for you every guy under the age of around about 23 if you take the average is not really worthy of being in a relationship with and if you want to have a relationship with someone who's balanced and for it to last for a long time as a girl I, I think that you're fighting a losing battle. I think that under the age of 23 to 25, most guys think with the penis first. They don't have a very solid understanding of who they are. And they're constantly chasing after, for the most part, they're heavily chasing after female attention to help them bolster their own ego because they don't have a, a concrete sense of character about who they are anymore. Now, obviously, there's going to be outliers in this. Perfect example is my business partner, Darren. So he met his missus. In the second year of uni, I think they got together in the third year. They moved in when they were 21, 22. They got a dog when they were 25. They got married when they were 26. They got another dog at 27. They had they got a kid at 29 or 28. And now they're in this amazing house. And they Very systematic progression. Uh, yeah. It is the perfect framework. Mm -hmm. The equivalent of the American dream, but like marriage and college it. sweetheart. Like it's, yeah. it, they've got it. <laughs> But they're the outliers, mm -hmm. especially for him. He is the absolute rarity in this situation. So I think a lot of the time, people who don't understand what I do, my job now as a club promoter is actually more as just a leader and a glorified parent. So I'm a, a pretty much a big brother to between 250 and 500 students in Newcastle and Manchester every single year. And every year I get older, but they stay the same age. They just get replaced. There's mm -hmm. just this conveyor belt of new people coming in. And the same situations come up over and over and over and over again. And are these people who work for you or people who... Work for me. Right. Yeah. Not people in the clubs. Not I'm not close enough to the people right. that are in the clubs. But these are people who are in the clubs. Mm. They're just ones that I'm closer to. That's because you tell the people who tell the people who tell the people to go to, <laughs> to the clubs. To go to the clubs. Yeah, exactly. You've, that's the correct framework. Mm. So I think one of the first things that girls need to be really conscious of, and I'm going to... I'm going to do guys. Hey. Um, I'm going to do guys as well. I'm going to give advice to guys. Got it. But I'm going to go for girls first. Just to add to your foundation there as well, I think you said that going for a man under 23 and expecting someone who is stable and emotionally mature and reliable mm -hmm. for a relationship purpose is a losing battle because statistically they're not going to be. I think, and I remember you discussed this as well, which is that there's a the the curves of when men and women emotionally mature don't overlap properly. No. And I think by age 23, there's a stark difference in, like, there's probably both genders have a, a surge period where they do emotionally mature, but mm -hmm. they don't coincide. And so yeah. you can end up with an absolute idiot yeah. and Absolutely. wondering how you got there. Well, the thing is that at the age of about 21, I would say that the vast majority of guys are still assholes and girls are still psychos. Now, I know that's colloquially termed, but everyone who's listening knows what I mean. The girls have had their hearts broken by some guy who didn't know how to treat them correctly. Maybe once, maybe a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Their trust in men is just through the floor. Guys have realised... The mindset of like, sex as conquest and trying to... like. That's what guys are at. Yeah. Guys are, guys are numbers on, a, on the, uh, notches on the headboard and just spray it about as much as possible. Spray, spray it about. <laughs> um, so... I'm having this discussion with this girl in America and I was just having a little bit of a think about what it is that girls need to be wary of. And basically what is the format, you know, on this podcast, we talk about life hacks. We try and lay out in as simple and conceptual a way as possible, how you can be optimal, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's the best way to behave in the world? And this may not be the best way, but it's the best way that I can think of. So it's worth me like saying to you guys, right? It's worth mm -hmm. me articulating. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I think that girls need to do when they start speaking to guys, and this is in, you've met them in a club or you've like matched them on Tinder or you've started chatting to them from work or whatever it might be. When you first begin speaking to them, I think that girls get too much of a bad rap for giving lads a hard time and making them jump through hoops. Personally, for me, I don't think they're making them jump high enough. Like I think that the hurdles that are laid down by girls for men 
especially when you're talking 20, 21, 22, 23, mm -hmm. and, but up to, you know, up throughout the whole way through life, I think the higher that the hurdles are, as long as you are making sure that the man knows that you're interested and that you're giving them sufficient attention to know that they're going to continue to play the game, I think it's a win-win scenario, including for the men, right? And let me tell you why. So, firstly, if you're laying down, and by laying down hurdles, what I mean is not folding <coughs> or... Um, compromising on something that you think when they do something wrong, you tell them straight away and you mm -hmm. put them in their place when they make plans and they cancel them. You don't need to go overboard. You don't need to be passive aggressive. And we'll get onto that in a second because that is the number one way to remove the integrity of what you're saying, right? Passive aggressiveness for me is up there with the top no no's that you should, that girls should do in relationships and guys as well. <laughs> By laying down these hurdles for girls, the first thing that it does is it certifies that the guy who you're speaking to is invested in you in the long term. If they're not prepared to get past you asking them a question about their last relationship or you asking them to make plans for a night out, if you ask them, okay, let's go out on Wednesday, but I'm going to let you plan the date. I'll plan the next one, but you plan the date. And you turn up and he then says, I've got nothing planned. You need to tell him that he's fucked up. You need to say that's shit. That's not that's not a good investment in your time. So it's the the example there is is having a principle and making sure that the principle is upheld. Draw some hard lines in the sand of what is and is not acceptable behaviour. So, so I think I've seen both ends of the spectrum where either there is shit testing for shit testing's sake, and it mm -hmm. almost is like it's contrived. It's just trying to give someone a hard time for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. But there's no real underlying principle. Very similar to if you've seen the argument clinic on Monty Python, where he goes into the room and he's like, "Hello, and <coughs> am I in the right room for an argument?" He's like, "No, you aren't." Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's no. Can I'm you, not. Can you briefly explain on. what shit testing is, please, for people who yeah, don't sure. know pickup so, artistry? Well, ultimately, well, so yeah, I'd like to get onto pickup artistry as well. But yeah, so shit testing, just what you've said, giving someone. A like a hard time or, or to see how they respond. That, yeah, it's, the purpose, it's the purpose of doing that though, right? Purely for that, without an underlying. It's the um, female intention. equivalent of negging, right? Yeah. So, so the and what my point is that there has to be a certain agenda, and that has to be a stable set of principles. It's got to said. be born out of integrity. <clears throat> Whereas at one point in the argument clinic, he's like, "No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, hang on, this isn't an argument. This is just contradiction." He's like, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. Like, <laughs> an argument is a series of statements formed around a specific foundational point, whereas you're just dis like disagreeing with everything that I say. And so there's the difference. I think, like, if it's if it's upholding a certain set of values, yes, then yeah, so you're totally right, and that's and a, that's the, something that I've missed. And and the other needs, side of it is just being a, a doormat. It needs to so. be. It needs to be born of what you what do you consider as a girl to be acceptable and unacceptable behavior in a man, then. Draw the lines in the sand and don't compromise on them. So here's the reasons that it's good. That you are going to make sure that the men that you invest your time in are sufficiently invested in you. Because the ones who fall at the first hurdle and aren't prepared to get over it, what do you think was going to fucking happen when they're drunk in a nightclub and some girl comes up to them? Like, this is... It's making sure that they can bear a sufficiently heavy load, even at a fucking empty bar level of heavy load <clears throat> that when they have to go and do a one rep max in terms of virtue, that they might actually have the capacity to bear it. Does that make sense? So it's looking at their bar speed when the, when the <laughs> bar is empty. This is probably going to go over the head to. of a few girls. <laughs> There's going to be like two CrossFit girls that know what but we're talking about. Like, but, but you're at the bar. But what if you were at a pub? You're like, yeah. no, no, no. no, 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 no why would I be in the bar? With camp, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So that's the, that's the first thing that's good. Before we move on. Yeah. These these principles, if we are for someone who's listening, yeah, does this apply? So I think there has to be a conversation of like, is is this person looking for a one night stand scenario? Are they looking to move towards? Have I have I jumped ahead? No, no. You've asked the you've asked the, the perfect question. All right, because because right. I, I think you have to begin with the end of mind. If the, don't you? if the, if, the, if as a girl, if all you you're shagging, then like, if you if you if you want a pasting as a girl, yeah. like. Crack on. Mm. Find a guy that is... Lower the barriers. Well, lower the, lower the barriers, but heighten the standards. Like, because mm. if you want a one-night stand, your parameters for what you're looking for in a mate mm -hmm. change. Yep. 
intellectually, how bothered, bothered are you? But in terms of, you probably want someone who's a bit lean. You probably want someone mm-hmm. who's muscular, who physically fits the attributes that you need. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, we've all been around beautiful but stupid people, mm-hmm. right? And vice versa. Mm-hmm. Really interesting people who are not sexually attracted to. And I find that dynamic so interesting because if you ask most women, and women, if you're listening and disagree, please say, but like any woman I've spoken to, and I've asked, would you have sex with a man who you find physically attractive but was really bored you, was boring as hell, as opposed to someone who you maybe but you found attractive but you hated, mm. and they'd prefer to have sex with a man who they hated because at least there's some intensity there, there's some passion. Some feeling. Whereas I think men are much different in the sense that, like, you could have sex with someone that you found quite boring. Mm. I think Obviously men you wouldn't want to scale spend it to time a with very them. mechanical yeah. interaction, whereas mm. I think women less so. It's much more visceral yeah. as a man, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, the, perfectly correct. If all that you're looking for is sex, then change your parameters around. So this is a different... That's yeah. So I'm talking, about, I'm talking about dating. I wouldn't say the... Okay. Uh, I wouldn't class dating. As, if you need to go out on the pull, mm-hmm. then we will do... And if you want a podcast on that, then we'll do a podcast on how to be single. Like... So How, this isn't this isn't trading. It's investing. This isn't exactly. This isn't yes. day trading. It's not short term positions. This is I'm looking for a long term yes. position. Right, fair. Yeah. So it's not going helpful leather on cryptos. This yeah. Is like yeah. 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 Exactly. You're not you're not margin trading. You're not <laughs> doing fifty times wealth creation. Of, yes. Right. Exactly. So hopefully that made it much clearer for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first thing that's good, right? Mm. So it means that you filter out the bottom feeders, mm-hmm. the men who aren't worth your time, and you you jump ahead a couple of steps. Mm. So cool. Second thing that's good is it sets a tone for the relationship moving forward. That means that you're not going to take shit. Mm. So we all know, and we'll get onto this when we do relationships, the proper relationships podcast. For me, the key in almost every relationship is like the first six weeks to 10 weeks. The reason being that you set precedent after precedent after precedent for what happens in X situation and Y situation and Z situation. What happens when you don't get a message after someone's been on a night out saying that they've got home safe? Mm. How do you react? How do you react when they get in late? How do you react when they cancel a date? How do you react when they do whatever? So I forgot to say, <laughs> that particular camera can only do around about 20 minutes at a time. So <laughs> every so often, It'll go. I'm going to pass it on to you. I'm going to have to get up and I'm going to have to change it. Thanks, video guy, Dean. Um, <laughs> You're going to pass it on to, or as in we speak, and then I'm going to get, up and get to that. Uh, if you're just listening, uh, that's completely pointless, but it's fine. So it sets the tone for the relationship moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. It means that you are drawing lines in the sand, not only for now that filter out potential mates, but you're also training them to be a good mate for you. Mm-hmm. The third and final one, and this is the one that I think is most holistic moving mm-hmm. forward, is... Men really, in fact, I'm going to make this into a four. Thirdly, men really fucking need this. The reason being that it makes them learn what is and is not acceptable behavior for women. Like if there, if you are with a guy and you find out that he's been messaging your mate and you think that that based on your own values and your own integrity, you think that that is unacceptable behavior and you bin him off. That's only going to happen to him two or three times before he goes... I probably need to change my behavior. Mm -hmm. The reason that this continues to happen is that guys are able to wheedle their way through. And this is speaking from experience because for years and years and years, I was able to outwit girls that I was seeing to one degree or another, whatever level of depth you want to say that is. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, I was able to get myself out of it. So I never learned. This is the Parkinson's law, like in a social context. So Parkinson's law is where you, and a task fills the time that you've allocated to it. And I'm sure if you've been working to a deadline with an essay or something, you're like, for some reason, you, there's no way you can just get it done a week in advance in a two hours. Long. Night before. It, yeah, always mm. extends to that. And the same thing, like, if a certain behavior is permitted frequently, then you lower your own standards for yourself. Get to reinforce. And so, and so as a man, you want someone to hold you to a higher standards. Like Earl Nightingale says, the... Treat a man as you expect him to be, not as he is, and you know, give him the room to expand to that and to rise up to <coughs> that perfect. challenge. So that that quote has managed to make a good synopsis, I think, of everything that I've come up mm-hmm. with here. So I go on. I, I think if I had I think as a twenty one year old, or even younger, like twenty year old, 
I was too ego driven to have probably realized the, I I think as a, as a young guy, you take a lot of advice like this, or I know this isn't aimed at guys, this part, or is it? Well, it can but, be, it should be because yeah. guys should realize they can make implications from this. Mm. The vast majority of the audience that's listening to this, maybe two thirds of it are men. Are men. Okay. Um, I think all of the behaviors you've covered there's a flip. To they, both sides yeah, they, they, they exist on need both, to understand. Yeah, both directions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that men should be interested in why women are motivated the way that they are, and women should be vice versa. And me- men should hold women to a higher standard of behavior as well. Just no, wait. Yeah, We're going to get that. Okay. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You get yeah I, I, just, I, think the, I think it's hard to, as a guy that age, when I think you're finding your, like, your own feelings and your own beliefs in a lot of areas like this, like what do I think is true in these situations, you're forming judgments based on experiences. And someone says, actually, women, you know, a woman should treat you like this. I think a lot of guys, when faced with higher standards or sort of a, a framework that they have to operate in, sort of resist and, and go for the, the person who's not doing that. Lowest hanging fruit. Yeah. Because it's I, just easier. Yeah. yeah. And I, I but think they, don't want to be, they don't want to be challenged with that. But again, as girls, do you want to be low hanging fucking fruit? No, of course. <laughs> like, of course so not. We, yeah. go back to, we go back to the first, the first advantage that you get. The fact that you filter out the guys that aren't worth your time. Mm -hmm. And if, again, with this, there's kind of like a curve, right? So one night stand is this particular level. And then Mm -hmm. I want marriage is this particular level. And then anywhere in between. There's some, yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you can go, okay, well, I can lay down lines in the sand that are sufficiently hard as I need to. But Mm -hmm. imagine if tomorrow every woman on the planet adhered to a similar framework as this. There would be a Global lot less. Standards there would be a, there would be a lot raised. less sex for a long time. Mm-hmm. But imagine where men would be in twenty years. So like if, really because if you want if you them. want if you want to have sex with a woman, you have and or if you want to be in a relationship with a woman, you have to learn how to treat her correctly. You have to learn what isn't is not acceptable behavior. And if you fuck up, you will be better for the next woman who comes around. So this is. This is coming from a, this whole conversation is coming from a perspective of like, women are the, on the victim side of this equation. Like men mistreat women. But men are the sexual protagonists. And, and women the, give access so to, to that. Women, mm-hmm. women, women, uh, female women. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a correct statement. Isn't the, it? the female kind. Uh, human females is what I meant. Got it. Human females are the only females in the animal kingdom that are sexually selective, right? Okay. So if everyone else is just if a chimpanzee is on heat, she'll mate with the alpha male, mm-hmm. but only because he's there. Guy the given the op- given the opportunity, yep. she'll mate with any male when she's right. on heat. Okay. The only reason Got she it. mates with the alpha male is because there's a threat of Big violence bench. and because they're because they're available. <laughs> Big bench press. <laughs> yeah. And he's got he the will beat. be. I bet he does. He's got the biggest bench press. Mm-hmm. He does. So, and I'm going to now move on to. Women mate across and up dominance hierarchies. Okay. Right? What, what, do, what do men mate across and up? Across and down. Do you think men just mate across and down? <laughs> so they never, they never shoot. When you say dominant hierarchies, you mean like I'm a 7 out of 10, they're a 9 out of 10. Is that you mean on that level of basis? Or do you mean. That's attractiveness, isn't it? Or well, is it... I, I, that's what I'm trying to get. Like, what okay. do we mean by dominant hierarchy in this so it's conversation? How, it's, it's how you have um, raised yourself up through uh, the social, uh, how high your social equity is, is okay. one way that you could put All right. this. So dominance hierarchy is, and the reason for this is, you have twice as many mothers, anthropologically, evolutionarily, as you do men. Do you okay. know that fact? I didn't. Right. So what that means is that on average in history, yep. every woman has had one child and every other man has had two. Got it. Does that make sense? Got it. So you have what's called a Pareto distribution, which is nothing, 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 everything. And that's because human males are chosen at the top of the dominance hierarchy. So you have losers and you have winners. Mm -hmm. Whereas with females, the distribution is more even. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. And the reason for that is that men mate across and down. (laughs) The women... Uh-huh. Mate across and up. So what? Let's let's take a very basic example of this. So I'm a really really attractive woman, mm-hmm. right? I know it's 
hard to imagine. Okay. But let's say very shapely. Let's, let's say I am. I, it's not just remembering. It's not just we're not just talking attractiveness I, here. It's the I, no, I know, yeah. I know. But, so I consider myself as a result of that and my social status to be pretty high. Mm-hmm. So I would then rather sleep with someone or mate with someone who mm-hmm. I perceive to be of a higher social status than me. Or on a level. Or on a level, almost in spite of what they look like, necessarily. So like if someone... It depends on it depends on how the, the dominance hierarchy will usually be influenced by looks as well. Right. Okay. That would be an... It, it, but there are multiple overlapping dominance hierarchies. And so, so like rather than having one big one that all of humanity follows... <laughs> That would mean that only one person would reach the top, and it was, competition would be so stiff. And so we create multiple within ones your, that yeah. within different social circles. So if you're working in, if if you're a if you're a solicitor, then like that, you operate in a different hierarchy to if you're a bodybuilder, and yeah. then mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. all these things, and, and we create our own so and the characteristics, can, and it's like geographical and within friendship circles and so on. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But the, the extreme of what I was trying to get at is you see, you, you have this image, it's like people joke about it, of like the the really fantastically attractive model who's married to a guy who is 80 years old, but extremely she's wealthy. Not married, she's not marrying for love. Well, okay. But, but she sees him at, as a very high social status. To a degree, but I still don't think that she's marrying for love. That's, that's marrying or being in a relationship without integrity again. Okay. So, so that's contrary to this, this model. To a degree. Yeah, right. I, it's, I don't think she's marrying up and across dominance hierarchies. I think she's marrying up and across income hierarchies. Like mm. she's just which, waiting for which, the fucking which world a to form, come It's a form of a dominance hierarchy, but yeah, mm. the, the agenda there is skewed because, like, the typical gold digger <laughs> thing is like you're waiting for someone to die so that you can inherit but their money. The income may be associated uh, with like social status, but there's still they're publicity. Not, like, yeah, okay. So there's maybe some that like the idea of it dragging them up mm-hmm, a little bit. Mm-hmm. So. Um, you, you touched on an interesting point, and I can imagine that some people at home might be thinking that this does sound like men are the sexual aggressors and women are victims, these maidens in waiting, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But we cannot get away from the fact that women are the ones that make the decision to say yes or no broadly, okay? Well, they have to bear a greater biological load for absolutely. That's, period. That's not been my experience. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Becca. Um, so so like, they, they are the ones. They're the ones that make the decision mm-hmm. broadly. Okay. Yeah. They're the ones that get to say yes or no. Mm-hmm. So what that means is that there are more men prepared to have sex with women with women than there are women prepared to have sex with men. And this is the reason for this. You have on average one mother and two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You have half yeah. the number of fathers as you do par- as you do mothers. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. The implication of that for men is quite interesting, I think, actually. Like, what does that mean as a man that you should be doing? It means that, first off, if you want to be successful with women, by look or by crook, the dominance hierarchy is probably a pretty good place to start. It's kind of like waving a flag above your head. Mm. And, you know, there's a link, I'll make sure that I link in the show notes below some of the studies about the mating like across and above and across and below. But as a man, you almost set a glass ceiling based on your own position within this dominance hierarchy. There was something that you said, which is a really like sort of Crayola example of this, which was like, I'm single and I don't know why, but like, I haven't got a job. I can't drive. What is is that? Oh yeah. Trying to find it. Uh, I'll have to dig that up because it was really well worded. It, yeah. But there was someone, yeah, like, so the, the flip side of that is someone saying, as a man, if you read books, lift weights, dress well, and smile, <laughs> instantly in the top 20%, you fly, you like, it, like it, it's, the, it's the bar, the bar is set at the ground. And so going above that is like incredibly well. And you know, <clears throat> to very briefly, to go back to the thing about who gets to choose to have sex. Mm-hmm. perfect perfect example here is gay pride was recently moving through the UK mm-hmm. and I've got a number of gay friends who've been to a number of gay prides and they say to me so you know lads lads on nights out <laughs> usually you think aye they're up for it they're up for it and really the only hurdle they have to get over is whether or not the women are again I know that we're regressing back a little no, bit to for, just for, sex for the sake of the understanding it yeah, yeah I agree that um, for the purposes of just sex and presuming that 
that's the first place they go to that then leads to a relationship. Whereas with women, it may be a little bit more of a, a slow takeoff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, imagine the, the decision makers are women. Mm. Now remove the decision maker and replace that with another man. And he said, mm. mate, can you imagine what it's like at Gay Pride? And this is coming, I, this is coming from the fucking source. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This may not be representative of all gay prides. And I'm sure that there's some men out there that play hard to get, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, men like to shag other men. Yeah. Like, they really, really like to fuck other men. And you go to like the gay pride events and these are the stories that I hear back. Mm. And they're like, some of the things that these guys see are like <laughs> harrowing. Really? It's like, I just can't believe how much fucking sex these guys are having. Yeah. Because well, if you've been to a gay bar, you get touched up so much. Do you? I've, I've not. Oh, okay. I, well, I, I've not had that experience. It might either. just be me then. But like, <laughs> You should take Chris and I to a gay bar. Do they think, do they think that you are the low-hanging fruit? I don't know. I've... <laughs> I mean, no, you are it's like slutty little in your party like, pants little, little, little nose piercing thing nose and... piercing <laughs> slightly exotic I, 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 I do get I get a lot of I get more male attention than female for wow. sure what do you think that says about you I think that's true for me too really? but I don't I, not in a gay bar like not in it's that it's because you've got like a neotenous face but you're like neotenous. but you're quite like angular please tell us big, what yesterday like, he hair, tried to tell like, me that his language vocabulary is poor <laughs> what's neotenous neotenous <laughs> like a sort of cherub like 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 younger face. All right. But like the, the this is this is other people's words, not neotonous necessarily, but people <laughs> being like, oh like he's he's got the face of an angel and the body of a demon. <laughs> wow. That's a very okay. fabulous That uh, sounds like the sort of thing that you find in your message requests on Instagram, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> okay, so because of that that I get male attention. I, Why I do think, you get male attention? I think, well, I'm speculating. Like I, 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 can't I think that you do. Me, you, yeah. You've got some soft features. Okay. You, it's nice. It's a, you. You're kind of like a, the real case of Benjamin Button, but only from the neck up. <laughs> okay. You're regressing. I'm like a little cherub. Yeah, you are. Can we tra- strap you to a tree? Well, we, no, so I, I would rather not. I was, in a, I was in a gym in Kenton Park Leisure Centre where <laughs> there's cages around the security cameras. Oh, I remember. And this. this man was big guy telling us about his time in jail and his steroid use and stuff. And he looks over at Johnny and he goes, you're lovely, you know. <laughs> Johnny's like, uh, thank you. I was like, fucking he's like, he's like, you know, you're just, you're, you're just said lovely. And Johnny's like, I think he was being deeply facetious. Can we, can we go? Uh, if, he yeah. wanted, mate, if he wanted you, he would have had you were You were his. Yeah, I know. There and then. There I was doing... Uh, he was just rapping bent over 160 rolls. bench. Yeah. He was no, I was doing Snatch. In you Kenton are. Gym. Doing Snatch. Doing Snatch. With, with the small, thick metal With plates. five kilo plates. Yeah. So, we've, we've done that. We've, we've segued. A little. But I think... Good point there. And then, you know, talking about... that The example about uh, men. Men on men. Men on men sex. The best example of that, you were saying to me, Grinder has a location feature. Oh, but it's within meters. Like, it's really... <laughs> Imagine if Tinder had a location feature. <clears throat> well, find the woman that you've matched with. Yeah. Well, uh, but, uh, but I think Grinder just has like a... It's, it's like a radar. Like a so like, does, I mean, if you play like Call of Duty or something, I, I, <laughs> like, it's like... It tells a, you everyone is. Beep, 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 beep. So is... Um, so does wait, that mean I, that men I, are predatory? I wonder if there's in more that context. instances of like a predation on, in mm. gay scenes than in like a... Yes, well, hard, what happens if you think get. you're a predator and you turn up and you're your huge 160 bench guy from Kenton Gym's there? And you're, you're like, been oh out-predated. shit, I've, this is more... The hunter's being hunted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but um, by that logic, you wouldn't mind being hunted. Yeah, fair enough. You're just there. Yeah. Well, no, because you might be a bummer, but not a bummy. And so... That's the that's the dynamics and the mechanics that I I'm can't even begin to I'm understand. completely we, yeah, ignorant. Yeah. We need to have uh, an articulate gay man yeah. to come and... I would love to understand more about it. Yeah, me too. Like, how do you know... Whether you're a bummy or a bummer. Well, no, I think you know... I think you know which one you are. Uh How do you know which one... I think it's... You put it on your profile. Do you? What about... You meet someone in a bar. What's the metric for that? Top or bottom? Top or bottom? Yeah, you just put that on... Like... On Grindr? Right, I I feel like I'm I'm just. <laughs> Why do you know so much about Grindr? I, the thing is, because uh, I got don't I got just a hit this with disclaimers. Why did you get what a profile? You mean the profile? I was at a party and this guy I was like, "Hey, you should get." A We've hit the mother load here, Chris. <laughs> right, I don't cancel this yeah, exactly. <laughs> Forget about dating. Right. Yeah, we 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 have to. Well, get, this is still this is still dating. It is. Right? Like, it's in the we, same. We have to get a, a gay man that is happy to talk about the intricacies of I've got, of I've, got I've got a couple that could be really really good actually that's fine yeah that would be awesome and then we can discover because I'm, yeah. I'm this is complete this is complete like, new ground for me but uh, Tom Ford 
the a fashion designer. designer has yeah. a theory that all straight men should be anally, anally penetrated. It's quite a good justification for this, but he does have an agenda, doesn't he? Because he wants trouble. to increase the pool of <laughs> so that's the men trouble. <laughs> that's it. why. If he was a straight man with that opinion, like, fair enough. It's the, argu- it. it's the no, argument. Oh, but you would say that would be tough. <laughs> Obviously. It's the argument that Brett Weinstein and Heather Haynes say when they're talking about Sex at Dawn by Chris Ryan. Mm. So Chris, Chris Ryan saying basically everyone anthropologically is built to be polyamorous is a really, really good way to just get women to sleep with you. <laughs> I see. <laughs> to be like, oh, mate, it's yeah. just free love, man. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, exactly. Right. Love. If you just bend over. Um, <laughs> So okay, so we've you know we've laid out a bit of a framework. What what are your th- what are your thoughts there? Well, so that that the that's what pickup artistry is, and I, I suppose telling people to be polyamorous is trying to sideline and subvert this this existing system mm. so that you can mm-hmm. cash in on it. And pickup artistry essentially is the same thing, but it's convincing someone for a short enough period that you are someone who you are not, maybe mm-hmm. higher on on a dominance hierarchy that is relevant to the mm-hmm. so usually like clubbing and that kind of thing. Yeah, and Hoping that, you catch up. Yeah, that sounds like such an old clubbing and that sort of. Uh, you go to a disco. Um, <laughs> but so I've I've got friends who were really into pickup artistry for some time, and there's one guy. He's a <clears throat> German guy, like really good looking, like looks like a test tube baby, like, and he was convinced that it was the pickup artistry. But I think it was just the fact that he's a good looking, confident guy, mm-hmm. and it just it just gave him things to so say. I, I think pickup artistry <clears throat> gets a terrible name because terrible name. It's in the name mm-hmm. pickup artistry. It's trying to just pick up girls, right? The whole point is that it's notches on the bedpost and this, that, and the other. But you could look at pick-up artistry from a whole number of other uh, angles, right? Like what I've done over the last three years with the people that I've listened to and the things that I've read has made me a better potential partner unequivocally for any girl that I spend time with. And it's meant that my ability to become in a relationship with women has also improved. As a result of what? Just understanding myself, doing introspective work. I see. All the but, rest is... So is that pick-up artistry? Well, pick-up artistry is not one thing, I suppose. And it's, it's evolved over the years. Like, from from my friend Lenny, I'm sure he won't mind, like, is... It was very algorithmic. It was very... And he was a computer scientist, so he was very, like, <laughs> focused Inputs on... Inputs and outputs. You, yeah, you, you say this, and then you, you alpha the, the toad, and then you neg the whatever, and you yeah. do the lemon. And it's like, this was all... It, it was all very formulaic. And he found that it made him quite depressed. In fact, it was it was him and someone else, but the, the other guy I'm thinking of said that it made him feel very depressed because it created this disconnect between the person that he had to put across mm-hmm. to be attractive to women mm-hmm. and the person who he really was. Yeah. It's like being able to lift on performance-enhancing drugs. And then coming off and being like, oh, oh shit, I'm still really, really weak. Whereas what I've done is I've done a strength protocol naturally <laughs> and brought my, brought my strength up to a, a level where I feel more capable. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mark, Mark Manson's book called Models, which is fantastic. So it comes under that bracket, but it's very different, isn't it? Well, it's more it's about authenticity, work vulnerability. On you. So he talks about diet, diet and training. He talks about um, like stop masturbating and go out and meet, like use that energy to go out and meet people. Mm-hmm. Gives His argument is that guys don't have a model, mm-hmm. hence the name, to interact with women. And so they try all this pick up artistry stuff and forget that actually like you have to be a valuable desirable thing mm-hmm. and this isn't that. to say this isn't to say that women aren't either of course women women also need to add value mm. but again for this I, th- we- I think I think I think women naturally put a lot more care in their appearance and and, and that side of things I, th- I would I would, I would go as far as to say that I think women on the whole are more virtuous than men when it comes mm. to relationships that may be a controversial thing to say but I do think that it's the truth especially at the younger age brackets. Mm. I think like, they put in more effort overall. Like, from... Uh, what? Mm. How, many, how many girls do you know that have cheated on men versus men that have cheated on girls? Because I know it at a two-to-one or a three-to-one ratio so going men to women. Do you think the motivations are different between why men cheat and why women cheat? Yeah. So, yeah, I can't remember who it was, some relationships guy saying men cheat because they want sex or they want variety. Mm-hmm. Women cheat because they feel... It not attended to enough. So here we here we go. Have you heard me use the Family Guy analogy before? Oh yeah, this is my favorite analogy that I use for dating. <laughs> There's right. a lot of uh, wisdom in that. I isn't fucking it? love this. The writers one. are clearly quite smart guys. So anyone who's watched Family Guy before, Peter is stood at the window watching Bonnie, who's Joe's wife, out of the window, and he's got binoculars and he's looking at her. 
getting changed out the window and he's making like under his voice going like she's really hot and sort of making man noise <laughs> and then Stewie comes in he walks along to the side and he goes what are you doing fat man looks at him he goes looks out to the window and he sees Bonnie getting changed and he goes I don't understand you've got this smoking hot wife at home why would you be looking at oh I see it doesn't need to be better it just needs to be different <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the value of novelty in a relationship of something new mm. cannot be understated. Biochemically speaking, as well, like mm. it's, it, we can get onto that as yeah. well. The, the um, genetic lottery, as it's mm-hmm. called. Yeah. But the value of novelty can't be understated. It mm. doesn't need to be better. Mm. It just needs to be different. Mm-hmm. And I think that so much cheating from men can be explained by that. So another it's it's, hyperbolic discounting. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So it's so cheating is the reason that people cheat. From my perspective, from like a behavioural perspective, is um, it's failure to see the the power and the value of a long term outcome, long term cost or benefit, mm-hmm. and not being able to discount that appropriately with a short term short term positive for long. But also, I think like especially guys, the number of the guys who I know who've like cheated and like have even thought about cheating and then cheated. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the narrative of they are better, different, more interesting, funnier, mm-hmm. more attractive, whatever. But I just think there's a fixed trajectory that relationships take. Mm-hmm. And it's just starting that process again. Yeah. Like month mm-hmm. one, month two, great. So There's so much stuff that we can go into here. I'm going to let you do the bit about the genetic lottery. Do you know okay. that? Do you sure. know the Brett Weinstein and Heather Haying thing about... I've not seen that. Okay, but... right. Well, I can, I'll be able to lead you into it I was it going anyway. to talk about the, the, the dopaminergic sensitivity. Yes. And, yeah. Cool. So, but before that, mm. I was on uh, Love Island, right? And we uh, Apparently I was. And 100,000 <laughs> people have seen the podcast. Good. Um, link will be I think here, it was too or long. here, video guiding. I think it was too long, to be honest. Well, I think, you know, <laughs> what else do I think? 5%, 5% of um, people that commented said the same. I think it was really surprising uh, to hear that you were intelligent, Chris. And I think it was, what were the other comments? I think it made me I think that I, I think that I want to know what gear that guy that's close to the camera is on. <laughs> Why is he so big? <laughs> that <what> <laughs> yeah. that guy's That guy's full of D-ball and water. D-ball and water. It's D-ball and lens, wasn't it? Yeah, Just it was. Well, yeah, that's exactly the, mm, that's exactly the point. So I'm on, I'm, a, I'm on the line with this guy, and I'm not going to say who it is. And he'd recently split up with his girlfriend after cheating on her a number of times. And he said this sentence to me. So the, the two frameworks that have borne so much of my understanding about relationships are it doesn't need to be better, it just needs to be different. And then mm-hmm. this interaction that I had with someone on Love Island, mm-hmm. being with this girl for maybe two or three years, kept on cheating on her. Kept on cheating on her, kept on cheating on her, and couldn't stop for some mm. reason. You go out and get drunk, so okay, like rule number one, don't get drunk. Like I'm a pariah, mm-hmm. paragon. I'm a paragon of sobriety. Okay. <laughs> and so that's easy for me to say, right? Yeah. But if you keep on fucking cheating on your girlfriend when you get drunk, stop cheating on her. Mm. Like By stopping getting drunk, all right? If that's the trigger, then yeah, you've well, got easy Fuck me. Solution. It's not, it's, 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 it's hand in the fire, it hurts. Yeah, stop putting your hand in the fire. Mm. Exactly. Mm. And he said this sentence to me. And he was saying, do you know what it is? I loved it a bit. <laughs> and then attacked by a fly. And then you were like, are I you could, okay? I like, couldn't have happened at a better moment. I know. I loved and, it a bit. And I said to him, <laughs> oh, oh, I got attacked by a fly. And, uh, I, call, I called the NHS helpline. And it, I was like, it seems to be having I've a seizure. got these floaters in my eye. Um, uh, it's like, I've used the stroke framework. <laughs> I loved it a bit. But I Keep just up. can't keep my dick in my pants. Mm-hmm. I won't be saying this. Yeah. I loved it a bit, but I just can't keep my dick in my pants. Between, it doesn't need to be better, it just needs to be different, and I loved it a bit, but I can't keep my dick in my pants, you mm-hmm. have the framework, as far as I'm concerned. So he's mm-hmm. not unhappy in his relationship. He just, he just is <clears throat> unable to <laughs> counteract his urges to a degree. And you think, okay, so what does that say? He was, at the time, 24, 25, something like Brain that. Brain Willie. Yeah. yeah. So Who's Willie? Who's <laughs> Willie? So, when will Willie come? <laughs> with <laughs> with that really coming with Sorry. that um, wait until he's older so that just he, mature wait until he's matured and just take it on the chin and the sexual drive that, that particular that, that particular person needs to make some mistakes right and as a girl we're going back to being as a girl and as a guy as well as a girl the implication is allow him to make mistakes but not with you as a guy, allow yourself to 
spread your royal seed as much as you want, Mm -hmm. but don't put yourself through the emotional turmoil of thinking that you can be in a long-term relationship with a girl. If you just demonstrate that you can't repeatedly. Yeah. What does the evidence suggest? The evidence (laughs) suggests that I love this girl to bits, but I can't stop shagging other girls. Okay, so stop doing so the not, bit that's... Yeah, allow like allow yourself right to... Time for yeah, allow yourself to enact... Johnny, fire away. Oh, question. So I think where that breaks down is it's... I don't know what that was. I thought it was an animal. Um, it implies that... Because we're getting into monogamy here, aren't we? To like, a degree. Whether yeah. that's possible. Yeah. I think probably... And I don't know. This is a wild punt. But I would imagine the highest percentage of cheating happens in relationships where people have been people are in their 40s to 50s been married a while the spark has completely gone from a relationship and that's when a lot of it happening and I think like I don't know there's a big breakdown of stats around cheating I've complete, I, I'll have to find it I can't believe you'll link it we'll link it. mind oh <laughs> in fact Is video, palace? video guy Dean mm-hmm. will make sure what up Dean that we will have those stats floating on the screen. So these, nice. so these stats, right here. It's these stats. Talk these about ones or those ones. Um, higher incidences of cheating with attractive couples, which kind of makes sense, I guess. But because they've got better access, maybe that's it, or maybe, maybe they feel more desirable. Mm-hmm. And I think there's also that there's a it's a, it's an immature game that some some women play, and presumably some men as well. And I'm sure you've you'll have seen women that do this. This sounds like you've been on the. Sharp end or something. <laughs> no, I, I, it, has, it hasn't happened to it's me. Really oh, fucking out of line. But. Actually, no, it has, it has happened to me. But um, yeah, so <coughs> women who will deliberately look for men who are in a relationship and oh, just try yeah, and pursue right, them, yeah, yeah. almost as a sense of like accomplishment. Just yeah, just to know that mm-hmm. they can. I was once in a club, and this girl came up to me and started being like really forthcoming with me, like straight, like straight away. I'm like, okay, I would have loved to have seen this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> help, help! My hands like, oh, come with me, come upstairs. Came upstairs, like basically dragging me up. And First then, touch, pick a palace. Oh, okay, and uh, she and, and then she came up to her boyfriend, and it was like she was clearly just trying to make him jealous with the up. first guy that she saw. And I was like, I'm going to get punched again by yeah. that. <laughs> Should have signed him up to the proper protocol. Uh, excuse me, wouldn't um, happened, would it? Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have signed up if he had a, if he had a 160 bench. She, she wouldn't. She have would never have gone to find you if he'd been on the proper protocol. Uh, okay, propenfitness.com forward slash just propenprotocol.com. Propinprotocol.com. There we go. Just bought the domain. Dean. Yeah. Dean. Bing. Somewhere. So, um, moving on. To the, we've segued did, here, but did I like... Did we do that bit? I feel like we were doing a bit... We're, doing, we're going to move on to the monogamy thing, but this is going oh, to be okay. an evolutionary basis for monogamy. Cool. So, anyone who's read Sex at Dawn by Chris Ryan will... I've not. Okay. So, uh, on Aubrey Netflix... Marcus recommendation, right? Yeah, well, Aubrey Marcus said the first time that he touched another woman that wasn't his wife, he was physically sick. And the first time his wife brought someone else home, he was physically sick. Is, is that, oh, is that like, like, sounds great, Aubrey. Like, yeah, it's great, <laughs> mate. Thank <laughs> you. Seize, seize, seize that day, mate, but get the bucket first. Yeah. That's the thing. He was like, I was on, on all fours, dry retching for, for weeks, and but I broke through the barrier, and actually now it's really rewarding. All right? And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Just yeah, sounds yeah, fucking yeah, great, Aubrey. Aubrey. <laughs> you know where he is at the moment? He's in the middle of the... He's in Peru. Having drink green smoothies. Yeah, drinking green smoothies Special over ones. and over again. Oh. Mm. So, anthropological basis for monogamy. Um, there's, uh, to preface this, mm. there is, I think it's called Explained on Netflix, and it is a series of 10 to 15 minute videos on a variety of subjects. There's one on K-pop. Um, oh, there's one on something else. Serious. And there's one on monogamy. Right. Chris Ryan's on that. And if you want to find out a little bit more about why he believes there is a this, this tenuous isn't... evolutionary basis for humans being monogamous. monogamous, watch that. Or read his book, Sex at Dawn. Or listen to Brett Weinstein and Heather Haying on Joe Rogan. And they do a really lovely little breakdown of that. But I'd like cool. to let you take it. it. Not the Chris Ryan who's like the Geordie SAS guy who was with Andy McNabb. Different ones. Not Just on Radio 1. That's, that's Chris Moyles. Chris Moyles. See, Pop culture <laughs> is uh, lacking in this room, I, isn't it? I mentioned Netflix yesterday on the podcast, and I was really proud. Yeah. I was like, I watched a series on Netflix the other day. Because uh, you go from it, you get it. Yeah. yeah. So this is a TED Talk. Again, there's so many resources, but it's called, I think it's called Your Brain on Porn, or it's something about that. And it's a psychiatrist talking about an increase or an influx 
of young men mm. with erectile dysfunction, usually comorbid with depression, anxiety, those kind of things. And he thinks it's because of the increase in internet porn. And he says that this is based on a rat study where they took a male rat, introduced a female rat, measured its arousal response by like penile circumference, um, and measured how that changed over time. Over time, it, so it, it rose above baseline, and then it became slowly desensitized to the female rat, mm-hmm. introduced a new female rat, and it went above baseline. Doesn't need to be better. Yep. It was just different. They kept doing that, and it kept going above baseline, but less and less until it became tolerant to the novelty of the stimulus. And eventually, it went below baseline, and so it wasn't able to attain the same level of arousal that it did first time. And he says that we're doing this on a mass basis where we have unfettered access to a far greater rate of sexual novelty than you normally would in general human interaction. Mm -hmm. And the rate rate of porn being produced far outpaces the rate that you could watch it even on double speed. I love love that. When you said that, you're like, no one keep up with the amount of porn on the internet like, when you think about that it's, it's, it's really true yeah. yeah did we ever do that podcast where i cited loads of porn hub stats i think i did it's a great stats they, they produce that don't they yeah Every you know why, they're a really clever company why i think they do that you can't market it can you, you can't advertise people just there. organic shares isn't but it? you produce that and people start telling their mates about it yeah because the I only imagine, thing i can like, think of well that's the thing you don't ever you, i've never been online and someone's sent me a link and been like What's this? What's this? Mate, mate? xhamster.com <laughs> forward slash vid slash da 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 da. Mm. So it's like, uh, 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 okay, have you got any more to add to that? So, that, so he, he says that what happens there is that this, um, we reset our baseline sensitivity to sexual stimulus, but also to general reward. And that porn addiction doesn't necessarily even come out of um, wanting like out of a sexual drive anymore it comes out of like just wanting some kind of emotional excitement and some, something to do connection boredom. it could be connection mm. it could be like yeah. and and so people start watching weirder and weirder like mm. violent it's like porn. have you seen Randy in South Park where he starts out like he doesn't get any porn for ages and then he starts with like Brazilian fart porn <laughs> <laughs> the first, first thing goes there's one here. where, where um, Peter tells Quagmire about, about porn, porn and he and comes he out comes and he's got it's forearm <laughs> Chris style yeah, that's um, so um, to move on mm. for men, you can get porn on the internet. Yeah. No, yeah. you can't. Yeah. So here's here's one of the things that I wanted to move on to. And this um, one of the problems is you may be able to jump in and actually provide a framework for men that they can lay down for women, as I have done women for men. I haven't been able to, and I haven't got it in my head. What I do have is a bit of advice for men who want to date. And I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Okay. So men who are um, outside of the norm, let's say that there's a bell curve distribution of people who are normal. And by normal, that is similar interests, similar mindset, similar everything. Like nine to five job, like football. Everything. Yeah. Whatever it might be. Wherever the the median falls, wherever the median falls, they are closer to that. Yeah. By its very definition, the deeper that you are as a person, the more contrary, subtle, or alarming your views are going to be to society at large. I love the idea of an alarming view. Hmm. But yeah, you're right. right. You're right. And given the choice between acceptability and honesty, most of us usually would choose the former. Mm. Okay? So very (laughs) Alanderbottom. What's that? I don't know how you pronounce his name. Alain, Alain de Botton. Alain de Botton. Alain Do you know Botton. why that is? It's because it's, it's a direct quote from oh, okay. why we are born to you be You said it Logan. so quickly. Alain de Botton. Very Alain de Botton. Alain de Botton. Uh, so the video that I'm citing here is one called Why We Are Fated to Be Lonely by School of Life. It's six minutes long and I must have watched it about a hundred times. I'll make sure it's linked in the show notes, but I cannot advise anyone who's a person of depth to watch anything more. It completely reframed my thoughts on this. And this is for advice for guys who perhaps don't fit into what would be a typical category. And if you are someone who's a little bit of an enigma to one degree or another, that it doesn't fit into the archetypal role. For instance, as a good example is what I always talk about with yourself. Like top knot. Well, yeah, what, that's why the top knot works. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because clean cut, often wear navy, 
but <laughs> oh my god he's got a top knot oh my god he can deadlift 310 kilos why is he a chartered accountant why does he run his own business mm. do you know what I mean yeah it's, that enigma is what makes things interesting I think even without the top knot it's yeah <laughs> a lot okay, of people yeah. are still confused but the same you know the same, the same for all of us to one degree or yeah. another and I think that's why we all get on I think mainly scone it's mostly scone you, you are the, you are the, the outlier you are an outlier amongst outliers <laughs> Um, so and here's my thing right so what he says is that a certain degree of loneliness is a kind of tax that we have to pay to atone for a certain complexity of mind does that make sense Mm -hmm. what this means is it can lead to especially men that have got a particular level of depth to actually struggle dating finding connections with other people And what I want this particular section of the podcast to do is to not only champion that kind of an approach for men to further themselves in life and in dating and in a bunch of other things, but also to get them to really dig their heels into what they, what they believe in and who they are. I think it's important to first distinguish whether if you listen to this, you're like, that you're not just like, oh yeah, the reason I can't get any female attention is just because I'm such an enigma and I'm just so deep, man. Like, what you don't actually, understand here is like, I just, I got these thoughts and they go around <laughs> in my head. Like, yes. Yeah, it's it's like making the distinction and having, being objective enough to say, is it because of that that I'm unable to find a mate or is it, I wish I could find that quote because it put it so It's like, well. I can't parallel park. Um, my, my t-shirts are always dirty. I haven't got a job. And I'm single and I've got no idea why. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, like clean, clean the, clean your room. Mm-hmm. Right? Do the basics. Basic like, stuff. Get rid of the low hanging fruit. Okay. Read models by Mark Manson and it's got all the low hanging fruit. That is in the there. Bible it's... for shit like this. Okay. It really cool. is. Definitely. Well, yeah. it's a shame I haven't read it, but <laughs> it's so th- there's just, there's no tactics or anything. It's literally just get, I don't think you should be the best yourself. version of yourself. You wouldn't be surprised yeah. by anything in it. Cool. There's, it's just basic. Do you know what, do you know what you might know this? Do you know what the word namaste means? I recognize the, uh, the infinite within you. The best in me and the best in you. Yeah, people water it down to mean that because it's like <laughs> it sounds less like. Yeah. Okay. Well, the infinite. The, the, the divine within. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, my my point here is that a number of men may, when given the opportunity between honesty and acceptability, a number of women as well. But I can only speak from my personal experience, right? But this applies to women as much as it does to men. They have the choice between honesty and acceptability. And if your honesty results in catastrophic body odor or mm-hmm. racial slurs, every other word, mm-hmm. or do you know what I mean? Like you need to, there needs to be some sort of mediating here. Yeah. But for the most part, what I'm talking about is someone who's maybe got a particular, a, an alternative worldview or thinks about, uh, tries to distill concepts down in the mind or has a very active mind or maybe suffers with depressive thoughts or suffers with whatever it might be that I'm talking from personal experience here and you can rate this down by, you know, there's certain elements of my character and I don't want this to sound like I'm proclaiming that, uh, like showcasing myself. But I know as an absolute fact that there will be less women overall that are interested in you. Your total area under the curve will be less as a man in terms of finding a mate, okay? being this particular level of depth. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, and this is to every man that's listening or watching, out there, you will, total area under the curve, you may suffer unless you pull your acceptability, uh, your honesty back in. However, every so often, you are going to strike a girl that no one else can get. And I promise that that's the way that it works. That you will get to the stage where a girl that you never, ever thought would be interested in you or a friend that you never ever thought, or an opportunity that you never thought that you would get. This works across a whole number of... And the same for girls as well. And the reason for that is that you're, you are the equivalent of a business that's servicing a niche market. And this market is completely, completely untapped. And what they're doing is they're making do with other businesses that kind of get close to what they need. It's like a similar solution, but not quite what they want. It's not quite what they want. And every so often, this person is going to find in you this unique blend of very, very enigmatic, different values. That they're not going to be able to replicate from someone under the belt. You have got, you have got absolutely not. And this is the beauty. This is one of the things. I was having a discussion quite recently with someone about this. Again, guys that have got this particular level of depth. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of the time, because we are presented the best of everyone else's lives, but yet we see the worst of our own. And this is in normal discourse. No one ever says, you don't say, how's your day going? And you go, oh, mate, it's fucking shit, actually. I woke up really depressed. It's mm. the candor is you're just doing it. It's a greeting, right? It's the same as saying hello. We mm. need to do a podcast on honesty because yeah. it's such a it's it, well, it's, the t- it's a core tenant of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, integrity, virtue, honesty. Be true to yourself. Try not to lie as much as possible, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm talking to this guy, and I'm saying, look, I'm aware that you get to see your own blunders from the the front a front row seat, right? You see it every single second of the day, and you only get to see the this much the highlight reel of everybody else's let's flip that on its head right what you have as a man or as a woman who sees their own depth is this really colorful world where you have so much depth so much variety of views and that means that you and only you can be you but when you see the highlight reel of everyone else who are choosing acceptability instead of honesty what do you see there all you see is cookie cutter design that's just replicated and replicated and replicated over and over. So take that as your power. Like that as someone who, a, a person who has a particular degree of depth is where you can draw an awful lot of power from that you go, well, hang on a second. Yeah, cool. This person I thought was really good for me or was this, that and the other. And then maybe it's worked out or maybe it's not. And I'm a little bit hurt or whatever. And I thought that they were, there were this girl that I never thought this guy that I thought I'd never get to be with. And I really, really value them. But you go, I see on Instagram and Facebook or on a night out or at work, I see fucking millions of people like them. But I know through personal experience that there's only one of me. I think that's a really liberating thing Mm. to think. Really well put as well. Well, this has been something that I've been, that's been percolating around for a little while and I've been trying to distill it down. I think it's very, that, that distinction is probably more prevalent in your world in the sense, in, in the world that it, that exists in the nightlife of Newcastle, then I think I feel exposed to. So maybe. I think with, it's an interesting one with Chris because um, over the last five, six years, at least since we've known him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just. No, I'm not going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the. We've we we've seen you on this path of of becoming more authentic, becoming more comfortable with your own uh, with your own values that you didn't feel were acceptable, and becoming more upfront with that. Mm-hmm. The problem that confounds this is that you haven't gone down in acceptability because deep down, like you're you're a decent person. You're not. It's, you know, you said like if your honesty is racial slurs and and mm-hmm. being a prick, and then you're actually trying to be more acceptable by coating over that then that's a different thing but Mm -hmm. you've revealed someone who is it is fundamentally a good guy Mm -hmm. and the authenticity in itself is an attractive trait Mm -hmm. plus you are placed in a dominance hierarchy quite high up Mm -hmm. that's 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 what i that's what i wanted to try and (laughs) and so so all of these factors plus like you're a beautiful man so um thank you all these things together go into the bedroom yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah. Um, so, oh my God. so so the problem is like you you maybe ha- like you haven't taken the hit on acceptability by becoming more honest because you had the other fundamentals in place. Agreed, but it's also still I would but still say to today like my typical access and I get to see the best cross section of potential partners, right? And this works for men and for women, I think equally. A night out is a pretty good idea because it's a pretty ubiquitous environment for people to be in. Not everyone works at KPMG, not everyone goes to the gym, but almost everybody goes on nights out at some point. Yep. Even if it's once a year, twice a year, once yep. a week. Very good cross-section. Representative sample. Yeah. And I know for a fact that I'm my access or my... Um, I imagine my, it'll have changed the access on the end ranges of the bell curve. Probably hasn't made much difference to the centre of the bell still, curve. Still, still can't relate to the vast majority of people in the middle. Like you, I, I'd imagine you you might sleep with a lot of them because they because there's no um, there's no nuance in that interaction and so there's not chance for that to be picked up on. But then, yeah, your your access and the depth of or to the the people who are the, the outliers probably. Mm-hmm. But remember, so and here's here's the the crux of the story, and this is for men and for women, right? I want this particular element to read as. A little bit of a champion for romance, to a degree. We're not talking here about like how to shag as many people as possible. 
And, you know, there's strategies behind that as well. Like, you know, there's an entire culture for both men and women of pickup artistry. Um, but this is more about champion for romance, right? And for whoever you are, you only really need, you don't need to perform well in the league games in the middle of October. You only need to win the cup final once or twice. Because as long as you're able to do that and get that partner that you really, really fucking desire and that makes you feel whole, you only need to get that once or twice and not fuck it. And that's you set for life. It's not about, like, no one remembers the guy that came 53rd in the world at, in the CrossFit Open, but they remember the guy that won. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly the same as that. You only need to win. Mm. And by getting that, by, by um, using your deepness and your uniqueness as a virtue and taking a lot of power from that, taking your power from that, it allows you to access these people as potential partners who you never would have done had you have pushed yourself right into the middle of the bell curve. Mm -hmm. Not only have you lied about who you are <laughs> so that you're never going to have a real connection with this person and you're then potentially trapped <laughs> in this prison of pretending to be this person for the rest of your life which you never were. So your level of depth of connection at the beginning and for all eternity until you die or break up with them is, is locked into this like semi-truthful approach. You also get to, you get to have a partner that you feel proud of because they love you for you. Yeah. There's an advantage overall. And that, like, I, I think in that sense, you, you maybe don't need to take the hit on acceptability in any, in any case. Like, yeah, it, it only opens up options. It doesn't close them off. And the more you understand yourself, the more you can be authentic in a relationship and the more you can give in that as well. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, how do you know that the partner is the right partner? Uh, do you, did you want to do one on monogamy an entire, as well? Got an entire framework for it. Who you does? do. But it, that's what all those notes are. Because I, I was going to say, can we, can we get on to these? Uh... It's a very big, it's a very different path well I think that we can probably close this one there okay. I think that we can draw a line under this podcast and I'd said before we started this one I wanted this one to be as close to serious as we can do mm. we're about to roll into a Q&A which is definitely not going to be serious absolutely video not. guy Dean I have um, I do I've run out of battery on the G7X. Oh, so no. FYI, we can get a roundabout bang on an hour of three 20 minute videos in there. So if you're listening, please subscribe to the Modern Wisdom YouTube channel. We will be coming back at some point soon when we've got fresh cognitive capacity mm. and we will be doing. So it's whether to decide to get into a relationship or not, how to decide who to be in a relationship with, and then some principles to to see if that person's a viable long-term partner. So everything from what we've discussed forwards. Onward. I think that's Great. really cool. Mm. I've enjoyed today. That's been awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. Please make sure that you follow Propane Fitness, at Propane Fitness on everything online, at Chris Willex on Twitter, all the rest of the stuff. Um, he's, not, he's not going to add the text, you're, and it's going to make me look like you okay. See, this is the <laughs> You're having a fit, aren't you? <laughs> you look like he was trying to land a plane. <laughs> Okay, K-bye then. K-bye then. <laughs>